Uh, my name is Jason Barris. I'm a senior VP of developer tools at Infragistics and always the message that I talk about at uh, FinJS events and basically any event is to let Infragistics be your UI framework development team. So we've been in business for 30 years. We basically cover every platform. Most of our focus now is on modern web. So when you think about Angular, React, um, and those newer platforms, that's where we spend the bulk of our time. We still have a lot of financial services customers doing WPF, even Windows Forms. I was at a customer last week. But coupled with things like OpenFin, it really gives us a lot of advantages for modern uh, development on the platform. So today I'm just going to show a few demos of some more interesting things that we've been working on and then also some of the work we've been doing around FDC3 since everyone's talking about that today. I don't want to be left out, uh, which is pretty exciting stuff. So all of the stuff that we're working on ends up being optimized per platform. So for example, we have an Angular product and it's a material-based product built on the Angular framework, which means we get the benefits of things like templating, rendering, pipeline, etc. We're not trying to build a least common denominator and make it work across every platform. Our React product is actually a web component with the React wrapper, which gives you the highest performance you can possibly get on the web for things like loading lots of data, lots of columns, uh, real-time data, high-performance scrolling. So you get a lot of those benefits because we really do look at each platform individually. We have a JavaScript platform that is just plain old JavaScript with uh, jQuery. We have an MVC platform. Uh, we have a partnership with Adaptable Tools, so if you're using Adaptable Blotter, um, all of the data visualizations in Adaptable Blotter are uh, from Infragistics, so uh, we're working with them as well as OpenFin, obviously, on FDC3. So with that, I'm going to bring up uh, some demos. Uh, I talked a little bit about um, the data grid that we ship in Angular. I'm going to show a couple variations of that today, uh, as well as what we're doing in React on the grid side. So the cool thing here about the grid is we've incrementally improved um, the UI interactivity features over the last few months and we basically have a continuous delivery model with this product. It's all on GitHub and NPM. But the big thing here, this is a 10,000 um, record grid and it's like scrolling buttery smooth no matter what's happening. So we have virtualized rows and virtualized columns on the grid. What I'll do is I'll bring it back up to the top and I will, um, we have a 300 millisecond frequency and I'll click live all prices. So now we're basically updating every single cell, uh, all the data in the grid um, and we're updating the visible cells. So every three milliseconds we're updating 10,000 data points. But if you look at the grid and we start scrolling again, there's no performance lag, there's no flicker, there's no white space. It's actually perfect scrolling. This is a benefit of building on top of Angular. So we're using ng template, the pipeline just works. We have the exact same uh, sample on using our tree grid. So some people may want a hierarchical grid. Uh, so this was actually a grid with hierarchy. So you can see here I had some hierarchy, so category. If I wanna take contract and I wanna group by contract and I wanna group by settlement, You'll notice this is still 10,000 records real-time updating and that happened um, literally instantly. We have nice features like drop-downs for filters and column pinning and column hiding. So all the things that you would actually expect um, in a grid like this. But the core grid is also used in our other grids like our hierarchical grid and our tree grid. So based on how you want to display your data, you're not limited to just like one single grid view and then that's all you get. So this is the tree grid. You can see that the hierarchy is actually um, leave the, they don't repeat data in the columns like the other grids do. And then you can do cool things like select all, remove all, but then everything else in the grid is exactly the same. So if we do live all prices here, it's the exact same deal. Um, another cool thing we do is we have an Excel library. The Excel library has all of the function support for Excel, all of the drawing support, all of the charting support, all of the sparkline support. So for example, this is just a basic grid that I exported, so I bring this guy up, and it's just a grid um, in the same exact format with a table that was exported to Excel, so everyone kind of expects that to work. But if I do something a little bit richer with Excel, uh, let me go to my Chrome here and see what we got. Well, no, that's not it. Let me see where, I have too many browser windows open. I'm really sorry about this. Oh, here's the, here's the uh, cool Excel sample. So this is our data chart. This is a React data chart. 
a React data grid, and I'm just gonna click export. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna also create a uh, Excel spreadsheet, but it'll create the native Excel chart along with it. So here, if I just resize this, you can see that it, we generated the table data, but then we also generated the chart. And if I go to chart design, you can see all of the chart formatting, you can swap data, you can do all this stuff. So let's say that you want to create a bunch of reports, uh, some automated stuff. This is specifically in response to re requests from financial services, so you get a lot of benefits from this, but Sparklines, I think it's like 60 or 70 different chart types in the Excel library. Now we also have a spreadsheet component and we also support generating our own charts in our own spreadsheet. So it depends which way you wanna go, but this does give you a lot of flexibility with, with your UIs. Now this grid, um, what we did is we shipped a React grid late last year. And like I mentioned, essentially this is just a web component with the React wrapper. It gives us the best performance you can possibly get, um, especially in browsers like Chrome. But you won't find a faster grid on the market when it comes to virtual, virtualized load on demand um, than this React grid. It's actually faster than our Angular grid, which we are already, from our advertising, is advertises the fastest data grid and data chart in the world. Um, but this one's pretty sweet. So here I will do live all prices again. It's a little bit different update to make it a little bit more extreme. But now if I just keep adding more data, so I add like 10,000 rows, I get the same level of performance. We also did something neat with this. This grid will render in DOM or Canvas mode. So a lot of guys want to look at Canvas uh, because it may offer better performance for whatever scenario that they're in. So if you use this React grid, um, you can just set a toggle switch uh, in the properties that say render mode equals Canvas, and that's not gonna use the DOM, but you don't sacrifice any of the features. So you can get the best of both worlds. You can get maybe a little bit better performance, maybe like some millisecond level uh, performance increase, um, but it's, uh, it's just a, a feature. So uh, let me show a couple more things that I wanna show the FDC3 stuff. Um, that's that. One of the requests we've been getting a lot um, of lately is around um, just charting in general. So we do ship a financial chart. It has all the features that you would expect. We're actually in, um, if you are using the OpenFin um, cloud launcher, that uh, App Store launcher, we're in there. You can click that and you can see how our financial chart works. What we just did is we updated it um, to work with um, FDC3. So I'll jump into those demos really quick here. Um, let me jump over to Windows. Um, and you can see I have the OpenFin launcher at the top. Let's click Mac, there we go. And um, I have a couple things that are just running. I have one server running just to demo one specific um, running application. But before I do this, um, you guys have seen this a few times today. Uh, or at least twice how the intents work. This is the view chart intent in FTC3. So we're auto-generating um, fake data in these demos, but whoever's listening could get those intents and then display those charts. So you guys bring the data, we bring the components, and it just sort of works. So what I'm gonna do is open up um, this IG stock chart demo. And this is the same exact demo that's in the OpenFin launcher. This one happens to be running local. Um, because I wasn't sure if I would have internet today, but it works great at this new venue, which is pretty sweet. So this is our financial chart. Our financial chart basically has all the bells and whistles you would expect in any financial chart. The nice thing about our financial chart is to, to create a chart that looks like this is literally no lines of code. You just declare the chart, pass it the data, and then we generate the UI around it. So we give you things like um, the ability to change the indicators, to select indicators, to change overlay types, to do different types of trend lines on the chart, to change how the chart displays. So all of this is basically comes for free with the chart. But what I wanna do is open up another instance or another chart application. That's the one I have the local server running that I just showed you. And this again is the financial chart. Um, we can change the way that the ordinal or time is on the x-axis, the y-axis, et cetera. But anyway, these are two separate charts running in OpenFin. You can see they just sort of dock together. But the nice thing is if I click my envelope, what's happening is that uh, FTC3 intent is sent over and it gets updated in the other chart display. Now to further highlight this, we created a WPF app, which also has um, some stocks. 
And if I select those stocks and I send those stocks over, they end up going to whoever's listening. So all of our charts are listening for that view chart intent um, uh, in this app, and I don't have any specific channels set. So if we actually open up this one from the OpenFin launcher, it'll actually just start displaying whatever I select here as well. What we did in this case is we created this little app so you can actually see what that intent looks like. If you're new to FDC3, it's pretty straightforward, um, but this helps you sort of understand what got sent over and then what charts are potentially listening to it um, to, uh, to do whatever. So with that, it says zero. Man, time flies. Um, I have uh, no more time up here. So uh, we actually are in the back. Vince and I are here. Vince is our managing director for Europe. Um, and please come talk to us. We have lots of t-shirts, stickers, and pens we don't want to take back with us, so please help us with that. And I want to thank everyone for, uh, for your attention, so thank you.